You see, you cannot have a transformation in your life if you do not transform your reactions. And the way to transform your reactions is to work on your core beliefs. People say, my core belief is, I believe in God, I believe in this or that. All right, but you have to look further. What? Describe your God. Are you living those principles? I'd like to welcome to the show, Riz Mirza. Thanks for being here, Riz. It's great to have you. I'm so happy to be here. And um, I, I'm so fascinated with Australia. And I'm so glad to be doing this show there because it is, there's like a, vor there's a vortex. I've always felt that, especially with the Aborigine culture and my experiences in Australia have been very fascinating. Maybe we'll get to share some of those today. We were just talking before how you visited Margaret River and I grew up in the, the bush, really outback bush in Western, so Southwest, Western Australia. Um, you know, I did my year 11 and 12 via school of the air, you know, back at home mm -hmm. on the farm. So I mm -hmm. knew kids, knew kids that lived in Margaret River while I was there, but it's a very, um, it's a very pristine place as far as the coast, the coastline goes. So I can, I can understand this sort of spiritual connection that people have with that. Place. There is. And I feel that, you know, the more and more I've been doing this work for 20 years, this lifetime, I started, I was born in New York city, born in Harlem and, and raised in the Bronx in New York. My parents came from India. And the last thing I ever thought I would be doing would be a trans channel medium doing this for the rest of my life. And everything started with a sensitivity. And I believe that that's a big part of my work is that helping people to understand that your sensitivity is actually your strength. The greatest artists, the greatest thinkers, the greatest visionaries, all of them were able to create what they created, whether it was a song, a painting, a dance, a play, a movie, a speech because they were sensitive. And it was their sensitivity that got them to where they reached. We tend to overthink our sensitivities now, where either we second guess if we have intuition, or we are more in our sensitive negative emotions. So when we're upset. So a lot of people, and I've been seeing this the last decade, a lot of students uh, that I've come to me have been coming who are empaths. And I believe that there are a lot of empaths that are, that are being incarnated in this particular generation, in Gen Z and the millennials. And there is a great change happening in the world. And there's no denying that. When you, when you said sensitive, it made me think of my brother, actually. I've got a, a brother who's two years younger. And mm. he was a highly sensitive individual. Like, you know, on the farm, death is part, life and death is pretty much something you're introduced to at a very young age with animals. And, uh, I can remember right. that there was, you know, we used to, all of it, most of our food, probably 95% of it actually came from the farm. We, we, we mm. lived a long way out. Amazing. So, you know, meat, that sort of thing, we would, we would, uh, kill our own animals. So, but, and sometimes those animals were animals that we'd raised. And I can remember this one particular time, how, you know, and dad, that was something dad took care of. We were kind of weren't really exposed to it that much, but he knew that that animal had been killed and, and it really, really shook him. He's very sensitive. And I don't think his sensitivity was something that mum and dad really understood. I think they obviously did the, be the best that they could, but he, he was, I wasn't the same. And so but that sensitivity was something that was a bit almost foreign to them. And it's kind of makes me wonder when you, when you say that, you know, whether that's, that was this something else about him that maybe wasn't able to blossom. And, um, yeah, this is something that made me think of. Never too late though. Yeah. It's never too late. I'm very much interested in the success stories of people over 40, over 50. I love all success stories. So if somebody makes it at 18 or 20, I'm like, wow, look at you. You did this at 18 or 20, but think about it to make it which simply means that you find your full expression. That's what making it is to me, that you found your full expression of yourself. And a lot of the time when people come to mediums, because I'm a trance channel, but I'm also a psychic medium, a lot of my work is giving readings day to day. And that, that phenomenon has never failed to amaze me, never ceases to amaze me, because I believe that we live in an incredible unknown reality. I don't think anyone can know the totality 
of reality. But I do believe that there are people who have traveled further down the path, exploring different states of consciousness, having these experiences in their pocket, so to speak, and they come back from their path and give it to us and say, let me just tell you what I saw. I consider myself one of those people. I have traveled astrally. One may say a trans channel is really just a conduit. I am I find a way to be an empty vessel to allow the spirit guides to come through. Now, who are the spirit guides? Are spirit guides real? I tell people, you know, once we get into the matter of belief, it's really about what you're raised in with the traditions you're raised in. Some people will believe in angels, but not spirit guides. Some people will believe in spirit guides, but not angels. Some people don't believe in any of it. They just think it's yourself that's talking. I am not ever in the business of trying to convince anyone of anything except for the validity of their own soul. That's the only thing I'm ever trying to convince anyone in my work, the freedom and the validity of your own soul, which is what you are. You are the soul. So when it comes to spirit guides, I say, why don't you pay attention more to the message and run it through your database, run it through your filters and see if this doesn't activate you in some way. Because people tend to listen with their eyes. For example, if someone, for me, when I stepped into the world of the psychic world or the channeling world, there weren't a lot of dark-skinned people. There was certainly no, not some six-foot-three, 230-pound guy wearing eyeliner and a mohawk, you know? It wasn't, it wasn't around, and people, were, people shunned it. People didn't want to hear about it. They're like, that guy, I mean, he doesn't fit into this. He's supposed to be wearing white, and he's supposed to, you know what I'm saying, right? But to me, the universe is far more interesting that which those people who are unafraid to be themselves are what interest me just in my own personal life. It could be just walking down the street. I'm interested in honest expression. And that's my perception, right? We're living in a world of perception. How we are perceiving what occurs dictates the emotions that we feel. If you get fired from your job, you can focus on the feeling of being insulted that they don't want you, or you can focus on, oh my God, something unknown is calling me to it, which is better than where I am now. Mm. So it is your reactions that create your reality. Sometimes people say, it's your beliefs. I understand that. It's your thoughts. But let's be more specific. It's your reactions. Your internal reactions create your reality. The universe, whatever that is, do you call it the planets, the stars, and the galaxies? Is that the universe we're talking about? When someone says, why is the universe doing this to me? I always like to say, if, the, if that word is confusing you, the universe, and you keep thinking of Saturn or Andromeda galaxies, that's not the universe we're talking about. So I say, let's replace the word, the universe, and replace it with my future self. So the teaching is not, why is the universe doing this to me? It is, why is my future self creating this for me? I want to explore that. So I consider myself an explorer, even though I'm a shaman, a teacher, an author, and all those titles that people like to put on you or don't like to put on you. I still think that we're explorers. So when I channel, which I'm going to do for you guys today, it is about, um, you know, if you allow things to land, they will land. We're at a point in history now that some may say, this is crucial. This is different than any other time in history. I saw a meme today. Uh, do you remember there was a TV show on in the 90s called The Wonder Years? Uh, yep. The, 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 the Mark J. Fox? No. Um, this was a show that Fred Savage was the lead. It was about a, a guy oh, yeah. who was yes. 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 his childhood. I'm thinking of Family Toys. Yep. I'm, I'm great. You know, he's, he's, a yeah. he's a god to me. Okay. So that show came out, I think, 1988 and took place in 1968. And it was as if we were watching another planet. When we were in 1988, watching that show, it was like, oh my God, 1968. That's like a show coming out today that takes place in 2004. And we're supposed to be super nostalgic during it. It's the same debt. Same difference, 20 years. So I think time has changed. The difference between 1968 and 1988 is far more profound 
than the difference between 2004 and 2024. Of course, there are changes, but we still had internet in 2004. So we are at a very interesting time because it's not so much about, believe it or not, the technology and AI and all those things we could get into. It is about inner technology now. What are we seeing? We're seeing TikTok with 14-year-olds, 15-year-olds, 16-year-olds, 9-year-olds talking about auras, what their sign is, what their moon sign is, what are dimensions, what are past lives, what are spirit guides, what's my spirit animal? If you don't believe me, go to TikTok, type in hashtag spiritual TikTok. You're going to see all these young people exploring these topics. So what is happening? You have the crowd that says this is the tinfoil hat crowd. <laughs> A lot of those things are now true, coming true. Ten years ago, they were laughing about, oh, aliens are visiting us. And now it's in the Senate. Now there are Senate hearings in this country where military men, where fighter pilots who are very well-versed in science and are coming with videos of radar, of UFOs. And so the Senate has to have a panel now. Ten years ago, people thought that was crazy. Look where we are. Where will we be ten years from now? Hmm. Where was this a hundred years ago? Where was it? When people say, what do you mean, where was it? I say, if you took this iPhone and me and you and you who's watching this podcast travel back to the time of, let's say, Abraham Lincoln, we just, that's not that long ago. We have photographs of Lincoln, correct? Right. Let's say we go back, we pop up in the Oval Office and we say, Mr. President, we're here from the future. He'd say, oh, interesting clothes. You would say, yeah, but we came to uh, show you something. What is that? Looks like a piece of glass and iron. It is actually, sir. Uh, would you like to see the sperm entering the uterus and becoming an embryo? Because we can show it to you here. You get the drift? Yeah. Imagine what his reaction. Remember, he's one of the most intelligent men of his time. One of the most level-headed men. What do you think he, think he would think this is? Well, Magic, sort of certainly. By the way, sir, he'd say, how is that? How are you showing me these things? Well, like, would you like to see the Great Wall of China? Would you like to see the Taj Mahal inside right now? Would you like to go and see the plasma of the earth? We can show you some of that. How about under the sea? We can show you a starfish that is 30,000 feet down in real time. He would say, well, what kind of voodoo or magic is this? We'd say, no, actually, it's technology. He'd say, well, you must be from 10,000 years in the future. We'd say, no, actually, we're just maybe 150. Well, you must be from a different planet, though. Actually, sir, we're from right around the corner here in Virginia or Illinois, wherever we are. He'd be like, what are you talking about? How is that box having those pictures and sounds? And we would say, honestly, sir, this little box is talking to another box flying around the planet. He'd say, there's a man in a box flying around a planet. And we would say, no, actually... <laughs> that box that is called a satellite, there's no, there's no one in there. But well, we control it from here. Do you know how long it would take for you to explain to him about signals, about vibration, about frequencies, invisible waves, silent waves? So my voice goes in here and this thing makes it silent, throws it across in the air. A satellite catches it intact and then gives it to you right now where you are. That's what's happening right now. You guys who are watching this, this is happening right now. So what does this have to do with spirit guides? Well, it has to do with the world of fascination, the fact that this is incredible, but you live with this reality. You don't find that strange because you call it technology. What if I told you that channeling is a kind of technology? Lincoln didn't believe this was technology. He thought this was a voodoo magic. And you still explained it to him in scientific terms, and he still would have trouble believing it's true. The last thing Lincoln would ask you is he'd say, okay, I believe you, but where did you get these materials? They're not from this planet. And we'd say, actually, sir, they're right in those hills right there. They're under your feet right now. You just have to know how to extract them from where you stand. 
And so this is the, the crux of what I'm channeling or what I'm teaching for all these years is that every resource you need to advance your inner technology is under your feet right now or in front of your face right now, wherever you look. If you are sensitive, you will find and receive logical, navigational, I want to say frequencies, meridians that lead you to the next answer. And that'll lead you to the next answer because you're never going to be done. So what does it have to do with channeling? Let's go back. Every culture has told you, whether it's indigenous culture, tribal, or even religious cultures have told you of beings that exist. They called archangels. In Islam, they're called, some people call them angels. Some people call them jinn. Jinn are like, that's where the word genie comes from. So every culture, whether it is Abrahamic or tribal indigenous, has told you that you are not alone. That there are spirits with you. Some are very good and helpful and some not so much. I call them spirit guides. So, well, how do you hear them? Uh, you might say that, you know, a dog can hear a dog whistle, right? You blow a dog whistle, right. the dog will go, what is that? You're not going to hear anything because a dog's inner technology is extremely sensitive to frequencies beyond the capacity of your ear. Not its ear, but your ear. What about a masterful painter? Studies have been done that master painters see 300 times more color than you and I when they see a painting. They'll look at a painting that looks completely brown in shades of brown to you and I, and the master painter will say, actually, there's a lot of blue in here. I see where the, how they use the blue. And we'll be like, what is he talking about? It's like the, the first time my mom was baking a cake in the house, and I was so excited, ex except when I saw her pull out the salt. And I said, what are you doing? I don't want, a, I don't want no salty cake. She looked at me. She said, you have to put salt in the cake. I said, no, no, no. I don't want no salty cake. She's like, sit down. You have to have salt. It won't taste like anything if you don't have salt. But you're not going to taste the salt. I'm not going to taste the salt, but, I'm, but the salt is going to make me taste everything else? Yes. Well, that sounds magical. It's magical. Well, let's not get into salts are also crystals. Well, that's a whole other discussion. So channelers, imagine. So today I'm going to go into trance. You're going to see my head go down. A different voice is going to come out of me. Yes, the guides have their own way of speaking. They have accents. They have interesting things. I don't make this up. I just work here. <laughs> just, I don't make the rules. They just come through me that way. What can I say? So imagine now all the channelers that you see. You guys who are watching, maybe you're familiar with some channelers. Look up Jane Roberts from the 60s, the great, late, great Jane Roberts. Look up Daryl Anka, who channels Bashar. Look up Esther Hicks, who channels Abraham. There's a few very good channelers out there. I think just a handful, actually, who are full trans channels. But now imagine that 200 years from now, remember the 200 years thing? 200 years from now, a technology is developed that when this channeler is channeling, there's a camera. The camera is super sensitive. That's its inner technology advanced and is able to pick up frequencies of light that seem to be going inside the channeler's body. And you're like, never saw that before. Yeah, but you also never had microscopes before. And, you know, we see cells now too. We didn't have the technology to see it before, but it's just imagine because you'd have cameras now that it can see an embryo and a cell. Why can't you have a, a camera one day that maybe sees frequencies? Because the channelers keep saying these spirit guides exist on frequencies. These spirit guides exist on frequencies. I see them. I hear them. Listen to their message. So maybe in a hundred years from now, there'll be a camera that does that and we'll all be dead. But the next generation will go, wow. Looks like something's going to that channel. Cut to 200 more years, and finally you see the face of Red Eagle, who's one of the guides I channel, go into the body. Why do we stop using or learning from history, using the knowledge we gained from history? 
we are always in such disbelief and suspicion of things, and it's unbelievable. Now, I know your crowd is not really like that, but it's amazing. Even, even in the spiritual and the New Age community, people are doing this. They, um, they become judgmental. They become separatists. They become isolationists. They become holier than thou. And I'm like, if your basis of what you're doing is not love, what are you doing? What are you doing? We have to know every secret of the universe and the world. Is it are you being helped? Or are you just waiting for all of that to come? Are you waiting for the aliens to come and tell you where you're from, where you're going? Confirm whether you believe there's a matrix or not. Confirm whether you believe there's an Illuminati or not. I had someone one time, one of my, one of my students was like, how come, what, how, Riz, how come you got that? That's an Illuminati symbol on your, ri on your hand. Okay, just go research, I don't know, art from the 1600s and behind almost every picture, of, a lot of pictures of Jesus, you'll see this. It's called the Eye of God. You go to India and you'll see the swastika. It was part of Sanskrit Vedic culture. It's a very holy symbol. It was taken by people hundreds of years later and made to be a Nazi symbol. But the root of the swastika is not evil at all. In fact, it's the opposite. So you got to brush up and learn and research and relax. And my, my thrust, and thank you for letting me talk and share this, Rod. I, I know that I'm talking on a, on a roll. That's my job, mate. Well, thank you. Um, you know, we'd have limited time. And for me, this is my passion in life is to share with people what helped me stay on the planet with a, with a joy in my heart. So I'm just sharing. This is what I, this is, I went through those forests, those particular forests, not all of them. And I'm just going to share with you what I got. I went into one forest. I met this spirit guide on the other side named Red Eagle. And Red Eagle comes through me and speaks. There's also a guy. I channeled a few dozen guides. You guys can go to my website and see whom I channel. Interesting case in point, though, Rod. You know, some I have channeled some pretty famous figures. And man, it's unbelievable. I was chat. I channeled. I I had spoken on a show that you know I've channeled Tesla, and people were like, "Get out of! You can't channel Tesla. How come he's not telling us all the equations? And if you're really channeling Tesla, he's going to tell you all his equations. Otherwise, it's all bullshit." And I say, well, you may or may not like the answer I'm going to give you. Channelers aren't here to prove who they channel. Listen to what he's saying. When Tesla came through, he never spoke about his, his, what he did on the planet. What he talked about was how to tap into your innovation, how to understand the frequency of your heart. He also tapped into like how to believe in yourself and follow your light. But then you have people like, well, if you channel George Washington, he should tell you the war tactics he was on. I'm like, where are you getting that information from? And why are you saying he should? Who is the authority? No one. I just bring through what comes through. So there are souls who come to the planet who kind of come in like shooting stars and leave quickly. They, come to, they came to leave an impact. Bruce Lee is one of them. He is a spirit guide. He was a guide while he was here. Of course, he's a guide on the other side. The man was teaching us how to flow like water. He fought racism and prejudices of all kinds. Not only from non-Chinese, but from Chinese who said, do not teach them what we know or we're going to kill you. He's like, well, go ahead and try, baby. Maybe they succeeded, but they didn't kill his spirit. So Bruce came in, what, he was 33 when he passed? Yeah. He's still considered the god of martial arts. It doesn't matter who's come in the last 40 years since then, 50 years. Why? I'm going to tell you why. It's not just because of his skill. It's his love. It's his love. Mike Tyson, I don't know if you're familiar with, recently has been ha is sharing with us his different awakenings in his life. If you watch some podcasts out there, Mike Tyson mm. is out there. He's had some very powerful awakenings thanks to sacred plant medicine, namely psilocybin. He talks about it very openly. 
I've been leading them for close to 20 years. I've led over 2,000 of these ceremonies as a shaman. Now they are being, it is finally being regarded on the official level as a deeply transformative, healing, cathartic, very important for our mental health experience. Now they're working to legalize it and put it into um, facilities and have people who have had tr treatment resistant depression, anxiety, PTSD. It's helping to heal the brain. All this is coming from the earth. These, this plant has been around since time immemorial. So back to, are the resources that you guys need to live the life that you want, are they out of your reach or are they under your feet right now? I'd like to say they're under your chin because it's right here. It's the center of your being is all the resources you need. Now, if people tell you, well, all the answers are inside of you, I would say they're half correct because yes, but if they're inside of you, you didn't need to incarnate. You came here not just to discover yourself, but also to create yourself. It's both. And everything that you know how to do or anything you know how to do, someone taught you. They taught you how to turn on this device. You may not remember, but someone taught you, saw it somewhere. You turned on this device. You learned how to tie your shoe. There's nothing you, you weren't taught. Your only instinct was to love. When you were a baby, no one taught you to open your arms. No one taught you to coo and to laugh, to want to kiss your parents or want to hug them. No one taught you that how to laugh when you got tickled. So no one had to teach you how to be in the love that you are. You live life long enough on this planet, you will forget. So whether it's a channeler or a medium or a psychic or a shaman or a Reiki, or a massage therapist, or the guy at the car wash who's offering you something. If you begin to harness the true power of yourself, which is your sensitivity, well, there's nothing that you can't feel in terms of the level of joy in your heart, because everything is about that. Career is about what joy you'll get from it. Love, what joy you'll get from it. Health. So we are always talking about happiness. We can talk about everything under the sun and above it. From aliens to the core of the earth, we can talk to people who say, well, I've astral traveled. And I'm going to come back and tell you this is how it is on the other side. Okay, but that's how they wanted to show it to you. There might be another room where they go, that was just stage one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the universe says touche a lot. So relax. Just, I tell all my students and all teachers who are my students, I tell them, and my friends who teach me back, I always share with them. We're just sharing our stories from the road, stories from the other side. From the road, I like that. There's something just, in there. Sorry, there's, when you said teach and learn, you just, I've been uh, wading my way through the Book of Ra in the last few months. Yeah. And how they always refer to you can't be a teacher unless you're a learner, and you can't be a learner unless you're a teacher. Man, how can you be? But be joyful in it. I ask people all the time, what is the highest vibration that you want for planet Earth? They always say peace. I say, I hear you, brother, sister, but I got one for you to try on for size. I, there's a vibration higher than peace. It's called celebration. I think I'd rather have 7 billion people on Earth celebrating together, together than just in meditation and peace, which is nice too. But I'm meditating so that I can celebrate. I'm not celebrating so that I can meditate. doesn't make any sense. The celebration is the realization of your gratitude, which comes through meditation. So maybe the meditation can help you celebrate again. How do you celebrate when you look around? How do you celebrate in times like this? Well, it depends on what side you're on. If you don't care about either the Israelis or the Palestinians, you don't care. So it doesn't matter to you. But the moment you care about one of them, you're going to pick a side. The moment you care about both of them, you have certain emotions. Maybe you're concerned with some other group of people or animals or unseen spirits. Who knows what you're concerned with? But the list grows every day about what is not feeling good and what's going to become of this world 
of the particular country you're in? Who can you trust? It's exhausting until you decide it is not, until you decide this can regenerate me. I tried a new philosophy at the gym. I like to go to the, to the gym and work out. Um, turning 55 this year. Good for you, Riz. And thank you. I can thank, number one, being in love with my beautiful wife. Number two, channeling. Number three, sacred plant medicine journeys. All of them have led me to gratitude, by the way, all three of those things. So the body has to work harder. I have to work out differently than I did when I was 25. So I started thinking if I'm at the gym and I'm doing these curls or I'm bench pressing, right? What if instead of thinking that I'm exerting energy that each time I push this weight up, it's charging me up. Like I'm pumping energy into my body rather than pushing energy out of my body. And I realized the reason I couldn't do that when I was young was because I was so pissed off. And working out and martial arts were a way to let the anger out. Now that I'm older and somewhat wiser, I'm like thinking about regeneration all the time. Stopping the clock. Pausing it at least, slowing it down at least. <laughs> and I think of everything that way. So instead of, I don't think of things taking my energy now. So if I'm in the middle of my day and somebody needs my attention, before it would be like, oh, can I just finish here and get to what I really need to do? Or can I just say, you know what? The sky's actually not going to fall. There's a moment here for me to drop into. So my life is not about, I'm in the boxing ring, ding, ding, ding. Then back to the corner, they throw Gator on me, Gatorade on me. Let's go back to Mike Tyson. So Mike Tyson, fierce animal in the ring. He was mad. He was angry. He was upset. He was scared. He's talked about all of this stuff. Watch the one where William Shatner speaks to him. So he did plant medicine. What did it do? Dropped him into his heart. He cries openly in interviews. He talks about how he didn't love himself. Now he actually feels like he loves himself. He doesn't see the world as an enemy. What if he didn't do that? Let's take Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson. Muhammad Ali, why do people love him? Because he was clearly celebrating life. He certainly had felt deep love. You could see it, how he was. You could feel the love coming from him and the celebration of himself. <laughs> yeah. And therefore life. He also was a great humanitarian, by the way. And then you had Mike Tyson, who was on the road of going in and out of jail, accused of all these things, and then just angry, lost his child, set him on the course. And now here he is on podcasts philosophizing, calm, crying. This means a lot to men. I hope it does, because we are taught not to cry from a very young age. That's like telling someone, don't sweat. I'm, gonna, I'm going to block with cement all your sweat glands. What yeah. will happen if we did that to a child? They would eventually become toxic and die. So you teach a child not to cry. That's what you're doing. They start to die inside. And then by the time they're so-called adult, communication, is not this. there is no communication other than a certain type of certain type of strength, which is I'll come at you. So I, I grew up in the Bronx in New York City at a time in the 80s, 70s and 80s where, you know, like buildings were on fire, man, next door. And you had to, and here I was a sensitive kid. Like, how am I going to survive here? Hence martial arts, somehow forcing myself to become 6'3". <laughs> A lot, of, a lot of Indians are not thick to be. <laughs> I think I willed that because I had to survive. My journey, with all humility to those wonderful champions that I'm talking about, is similar in the sense that I had experienced a lot of loss to, to, um, to live and find myself, whatever that means. It just, it just simply means that, to be at peace. 
I think to find yourself means that you're at peace. It's not like, this is who I am. I think once you're at peace, you found yourself. And how do you find yourself? You let go. You stop looking for yourself and you try to just work on letting go. And you'll be at peace. And you'll say, oh, this was the feeling I was looking for. So I would say that being here and channeling for you guys, or just talking, we're already talking, we're already kind of channeling. Everybody's a channel. They channel something. The word channel is the same as the word canal, has the same roots. So what is the Suez Canal? What is um, the English channel? It's an opening through the land through which the water flows and drops off people or goods and services. And that's what a channel is. <laughs> They're an opening through which energy drops off goods and serv services, basically. So whatever it is that you do, that you step out of the way and it flows through you, that's where you channel. For me, it's spirit guides and their transmission. For other people, it's baseball. For other people, it's I know how to talk to the animals at an animal sanctuary and get them to feel safe when I feed them or people come to visit them. For some people, they're an accountant and they channel the numbers. That's where you step out of the way and allow the flow. And it seems to land where it's really supposed to land. It's not about it being perfect in the way you thought. Sometimes the thing that you love to do isn't necessarily the thing where you're channeling. How do I know? Because the thing that I love to do wasn't channeling spirit guides. The thing that I love to do was playing music. I started off as a painter and, and I sang in, in bands growing up. That was where I was felt the thing I loved to do. But I noticed that this actually came easier when I started to have different awakenings and I realized I was a channeler, a medium. I was like, ah, oh, I don't know if I want to do that. Now I have students who are like, I would do anything to just be a channeler. Please help me. I'm like, maybe yeah. you have to first not want to because I, I never wanted to. And I, it, it just would chase me down until I surrendered and said, man, there's something in this for me. So I, when, I'm, when I listen back to the channelings from Red Eagle or some of the other spirit guides that I channel, I just released a book recently if I may talk about it. It's called Breaking Through. Sure. And it was the transcript from an evening of where I channeled seven spirit guides in a row. One of them was Edgar Allan Poe, which was mind-blowing that he came through. And um, it's called Breaking Through. You can find it on Kindle or Amazon. But point also besides talking about, hey, read this book. The other point I want to make is you have to be very, like to do that in front of people, you have to be very, very loose. Some people think you got, when you channel, it should be like, all right, I will harness the powers of the universe. I mean, man, you know, I will channel the messages for you. No, bro, it's the opposite. You have to be like very vulnerable. You have to be dropped into your feminine. You have to be dropped into that and allow yourself to be entered and allow that to be, and you have to be very quiet and still. So when I teach people how to channel, I'm not teaching them how to reach into the heavens. I'm teaching them how to let go of everything and be multiply their, they think they're sensitive when they come into my class. I want them to be 10 times as sensitive. That's where, like when the spirit guides come in, I almost feel like they just go like, uh, they touch my shoulder, the lightest touch. And I have to be so quiet. Just right now, surrender to that touch. And then they come through. And that's, that's how the channeling goes. I definitely want to get into a, a channeling session with you, Riz, if that's what you call it. I just want to ask you first, well, there was two things actually. One was when you said you were, in, you were angry when you were young. I want you to talk a bit more about that. But also at the same time, you probably talk about how, how your spiritual journey began. Yeah. I think um, my background growing up with my parents from India, I spent a lot of time growing up also in India, but I was mostly a New York City kid. Um, that culture is deeply rooted in, in various principles of new age, current new age thought, which would be past lives, astrology, the idea of gurus, 
imparting knowledge to you, the understanding that you're not alone in this reality, that there are unseen beings. That permeates uh, Indian culture, I believe. Um, I think that informed it. So the spiritual path for me was pain. Um, lost my mom, lost my brother, best friend committed suicide. That was it. Three deaths. And I'm a medium and I still couldn't find any peace. I was giving readings hmm. and I still couldn't find any peace until I had a shamanic ceremony with plant medicine. And I found joy again and cried and laughed at the same time. I cried pain, painful crying, and philosophical, gut-busting, Buddha-level laughing all at the same time. I call it the death. That's one of the many spiritual deaths. <laughs> I'm sure I'll have more to go, but that was the big one. Um, pain led me to the solution, which was finding freedom, accepting that, uh, there is no such thing as death. There's not even physical death. People go, right. There's no physical, there's a physical death, but not a death of the spirit. I go, well, do you want to go a little bit deeper? I go, of course. I go, all right, let's define what metaphysical is. Greater than the physical meta beyond the physical. No, it's beyond the physical that you currently perceive. If we went back 100 years ago and said to people, or 400 years ago, and said, let me explain to you, let me draw a picture of mitochondria. They'd say, what is, what is it you're talking about, the mitochondria? Well, it's, it's how you get you know, ATP and mitochondria, is how your body makes energy on this cellular level. They would say, we well, don't know what you're talking about. That sounds like metaphysical stuff. <laughs> <laughs> science and magic is science. Is magic science you haven't discovered yet? Or is science magic you haven't discovered yet? What is it? What are these words? So that idea of, I lost my train of thought there because I just went there. What was I talking about? Um, we were, you were talking about physical versus metaphysical. Physical, okay, uh, metaphysical physical simply end. means, thank you. Metaphysical simply means beyond which you can perceive physically now. Because I, as a medium, I have seen spirits. I've done, I do a lot of paranormal clearings in houses, things I've, I've seen that I have to put in a book one day. Now I see them, whether another person believes that or not can only be done if I give them a message and I go, oh, so did this thing happen the other day? And they go, it did. I go, well, and the spirit told me. Okay. So th people say that's metaphysical. It's metaphysical for them. What about paranormal? They're really, you see the supernatural. The supernatural is not the supernatural. The supernatural is the natural. What do you consider supernatural? Spirits, ghosts, auras, those are real. They're just, you don't see them yet. They're not, they're all part of the natural world. So when you expand your definition of natural, it will include what you previously considered to be supernatural. Hmm. So I say the natural world, the metaphysical world. So the body dies, you go, well, the body died. Well, the body turned into energy that I can feel. Maybe you can feel it too. So it's an, it is imperceptible. No, it is perceptible. You just can't perceive it with a camera. But maybe you feel the energy. Don't you feel energy when you walk in a room? What are you feeling? The most non-believing person who doesn't believe in any of the stuff we're talking about will still say, man, I walked into the room. It was just bad energy. These people were shooting me some bad energy. Wait, wait rational, logical person. Uh, could you expound on that? What do you mean exactly by there was bad energy there? Well, you know, bad vibes. You mean vibrations? You mean frequencies? In the air, where did that come from? See, metaphysical is still physical. It's just what level of 
technology do you have to perceive something? For that matter, one can say, NASA can keep on saying that there's no life on Venus because we've sent cameras there. Your prehistoric caveman level cameras? Are those the cameras you're talking about that you sent to Venus? What about the cameras in 2,000 years? Maybe there's life forms on Venus that your camera can't pick up. You already said there's, you could blow a dog whistle and the dog only hears it. You already know that your eyes can only see a certain certain field of light spectrum. So what if something is beyond that spectrum? You're just going to say, well, there's no life there because I didn't see it. Upgrade your technology in every area of your life. Always. You don't believe in spirit guides or this or that. Or that or, well, study energy. And you'll Eventually, you're going to realize that, man, I can never say never. Riz? Mm. Um, I am super keen for some so channeling. On. Let's do it. So, if you're if you're cool to do that, then firstly, could you just I explain a, a little? <laughs> yeah, it drinks water. Uh, could you just explain a little bit of the process, just for people who aren't familiar? And most of my okay, viewers nice. haven't seen anyone channel on the channel yet, so yeah, talk through it. I'm talk us through I'm it. honored. I'm honored to be on the show to be the first trans channeler. Trance channeling, I'll tell you quite literally what it is, everyone. It is where the channeler enters into a deep trance state. It is not a trance-like state. It is the trance state. I've even channeled with diodes on my head where the brainwave shift happened in five seconds. It was almost like some, the, the guy actually compared it to narcolepsy. He's like, it's like you fell asleep, but you kept talking. Your brain went into deep sleep state in 10 seconds. I'll, I'd like to share some of those videos with you one day. So the channeler goes into a deep state of trance. It is like they're emptying their body of their personality. It's the only way I can put it, guys. And the spirit guides use that. They use your body, not a possession in the scary sense. It is these spirit guides are highly ascended, evolved beings. They've been channeling books and teachings and messages for since we were all in tribes. This is the same thing. We're doing it on the internet now. So they come through. They take over the body. It's almost like I go to the back seat of the car. I hand the keys and the steering wheel to them. So they get in the driver's seat. Now they're driving. They're dictating how this experience goes. I'm in the back seat, just like you as a passenger. That's all that's happening. They speak, the voice often changes a bit, the accent often changes, and their cadence, their manner of speaking changes, and uh, they come and speak. That's all I can say. At the end of it, they bring me back into the body. The process is one of deep surrender. If you guys have ever meditated, you know it's a lot of deep breathing and letting go, letting go, letting go until finally you feel kind of quiet inside. I have been in this practice for many, many decades. And so I'm able to drop in much, much faster. It's just like any, any kind of activity, activity that you've been doing and practicing for a long time. You're able to do it faster than other people. That's all it is. I'm able to go in very quick and I'm able to leave my body very quickly. Okay. Um, I feel the guide I'm going to channel today is my main guide, Red Eagle. Excellent. People, people say he's a Native American guide. Well, he doesn't really have an ethnicity on the other side. We've all been different... Last lifetime, I, I could look like you, Rod, and you could look like me, or I could look like you who's watching, and you could look like me. So we switch identities. We are not one ethnicity. Our, certainly our spirit has no ethnicity on the other side, which a lot of warring factions on this planet are going to find to be a very big surprise when they get to the other side. And they say, what do you mean? I'm not that? They're like, no, and you, you're not. So you're just fighting for Earth reasons. Um, but Red Eagle does come across that way as a chief. He likes to joke, you get two Indians for the price of one because he's Feather and I'm <laughs> Doc. Excellent. He's been saying that joke for years and it never gets old. Um, uh, but he's almost like talking to a tree. You know, when I see him, he comes almost more like a tree with a face. That's how he appears to me. He doesn't really come in like uh tribal regalia. I asked him one time, why did you choose me? 
really chose me. And he said that there were some similarities that he and I had and that I was just open and um, that's it. I, it's not really that important to me why. But uh, that's the how. I calm down. I feel him. I let him through. And he brings me back whenever I'm supposed to be back. So when I, I'm going to start now. And I just ask you guys, if you're able to, and you're not driving your car, um, that you are, if you're seated comfortably somewhere, that you just take your hands and place them on your lap and have your palms facing upward, just so that we connect. And look, you're not here live watching this podcast, but you're watching it in the moment. So whenever you're watching it, it doesn't matter that it was recorded before you're watching it. The moment is always now. So let's drop in now. Close your eyes. I'm going to do it. Drop your shoulders. At the count of three, take a deep breath in through your nose. One, two, three. Hold the breath. Hold the breath. Relax your face. Drop your shoulders and do a... All right. That's just a cleansing breath. Surround yourself with light. Imagine a beautiful light around you, everyone, emanating from the point between your eyebrows. This is your third eye. So many cultures have referred to this point between your eyebrows as the portal to your higher consciousness. It is also a portal to higher dimensions where you can receive transmissions. It's just that you aren't really taught how to use it. But I encourage you to learn meditation and breathwork and to give yourself the gift of developing your natural birthright of your sixth sense and your third eye. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my friends. And I will see you later. You can open your eyes and chill. Hello. Hey, Red Eagle. Red Eagle, thanks for being here with us. It's nice to have you. You call this moment now. You say, I am seeing you now. I am watching the channel or channel now. I am watching my laptop, my phone, my TV. Right now, I hear you right now. I hear the voice coming from the channel. But you are neither seeing nor hearing anything in the now. Even if you are sitting here in this room right now. Because it takes time for this sound to leave the body and reach your ears. It travels at the speed of sound. That sound. It is the vibration, the frequency. And it travels. So it takes time if you were to slow it down. You could see it. Very slow movement of these sound waves traveling to you where you are. So you never actually hear sound as it is happening. Each word that is being said to you right now, you are hearing a little bit after the fact. Take a breath now and think about what we are saying and see. Of course, it is true. It is part of your your laws of physics and science. Did sound travels at the speed. What about light? You see at the speed of light, if all the lights were to go off on the planet or in your room, you could not see nothing. You only see light that is bouncing off of something reflected back to your eye. The signal goes to your brain. You interpret it, process it. Define it as what you are seeing. That is a laptop. That is a light. That is a candle in the back. So very quickly, let us review and move forward. You do not hear anything in the present moment. You never have and you never will. As long as you are in the body, you are not hearing any sound in your room right now or in this transmission. It is just a little bit late. There is a delay. What about light? So everything you are seeing, including this screen right now in the body of the channeler, we're moving his hands. You're not seeing it now. It is still after the fact because the light has to reach your eyes. So if you do not hear in the now, and you never have, and you, what we mean is in real time, and you do not see in real time, then what is all this? Or you want to be present. You meditate. I want to be in the present moment. It is not the physical present moment. 
It is the stillness of your soul. Does your body have to be still for your mind to be? No. There are many Olympic athletes who are running down the track. Top speed, body, muscles, tendons, heart beating, blood moving, brainwaves firing. Yet, the soul is at peace, the mind is still. The brain is different than the mind. Open the skull, you will only find the brain. You will not find the mind. No matter how many times you cut that flesh that is sitting in your skull, you will never find the mind. There is an intelligence that exists. Does the intelligence exist in the organs of the body that you have a liver, you have kidneys? If you were to open up a body and pull out the kidneys, pull out the heart, pull out the liver, and you slice through it, you will not find anything but flesh. They do different functions in the body. How do they know what to do? You say the brain tells them. But what is the liver made of that is different than the kidney, that is different than the heart, the spleen, the pancreas? Isn't it all made of flesh? Isn't it all made of matter? Yeah, it is all matter. You take a piece of matter, an atom, from your eyelash. Imagine if you could put it under the atomic microscope. Then you take a piece from the bumper of your car, an atom. Then an atom off of the whiskers of your cat and off of a tin can in your fridge. Put all four atoms under the microscope. You will never be able to tell where that atom came from. They will all look the same. All the minerals, they are made of matter. The matter seems to be very neutral. You cannot identify the properties of an atom, just the structure of it. You don't know what it is. At some point, you just have to say, well, it is an atom. Seems to carry information. Yeah, it does seem to carry information. What information? What is information? Your tongue receives information. You put a strawberry or a piece of lemon on your tongue. It is giving you information. That is what the flavor is. Each part of your tongue is designed or certainly facilitates or its function is to taste different things. Certain part of your tongue tastes sweet. The other part tastes bitter or sour or salty. This is medical fact. So the information goes in, the tongue receives it. Is it the tongue or the brain? The tongue receives the information. The brain, the brain processes it. What does that mean? It tastes the information of what is called sour. Remember something. Sour to you may not be sour to the bear. The bear has a tongue too. So you eat the sour candy or the lemon. You get sour taste in your mouth. Now, what if you like it? And what if you don't like it? Is that the mind? Yeah, now you have the mind. You can change your mind. There are things, hopefully there are things, that you used to not like that you like now. Maybe there's something you used to eat that now you don't care for. Maybe there was something you used to refuse to eat as a child. Now you, now you have the taste for it. Why? What is different? Is your tongue different? People will say, yeah, every part of your body regenerates every seven years. Every, it has done it over and over again. Every day it is happening. So the liver you have now is not the liver you had when you were a kid. No. And will not even be the liver when you die. But then why do you keep having illnesses? That is a whole nother story we'll get into one day with you. But we will touch on it now. Your body listens to information. It is designed to do that. It is your interface with a physical reality that you call physical. You call it the 3D. Now you will have many people on your program who say, I will talk to you from the 12D. What do you mean the 12D? 
Where is this twelfth dimension? Is it over there behind Saturn? No, all dimensions are here and now. How do you know? Tonight, when you go to sleep, you will enter, you will peek into, you will interact in another dimension in your dreams. Your body has not left. You're traveling into other dimensions. Is it in your brain or is it in your mind? Your brain has one purpose, one function. That is, press this button, record. Two plus two is four. Record it. Don't ask why. The moment you ask why, the mind is now moving. How do you get a hold of your mind? Well, the mind, like you, maybe you are the mind, the cosmic mind, wants more. You always want more. There is not a person who does not want more. We can prove it to you. You will want more, even when you want less. You say, I want to get rid of all my stuff. I want less. Oh, you want less of this, but you want more of that. Uh -huh. What else? What if you say, no, I'm happy with the way things are. I don't want more. Would you like to experience it in two more seconds? How about now in five more seconds? What about tomorrow? Would you like to still have this chair tomorrow? How about this laptop? You want it tomorrow? So you want more. Now, what if you have the real stubborn person who says, no, I don't care if I don't have it in two seconds. I don't want more. All right, let us explore that. So you are fine if you die. Yes. Is death more? I don't know. Well, we ask you a philosophical question. Why don't you answer philosophically? I don't know. If you really believe you don't know, then you should listen to maybe somebody says, they know. Well, I don't believe you. Oh. What is your reference for not believing what somebody else says? It means you have a base of knowledge, a foundational perspective, your opinion, as you call it, that you are not revealing. You just said you don't know. The moment we tell you something that you don't agree with, suddenly you say, I don't believe you. That means you know something, or you believe you know something. You're just not saying it. You see, you cannot have a transformation in your life if you do not transform your reactions. And the way to transform your reactions is to work on your core beliefs. People say, my core belief is, I believe in God, I believe in this or that. All right, but you have to look further. What? Describe your God. Are you living those principles? Is your relationship with this, you say God is your God, but what is the relationship here? Is it about the afterlife? That you do good here, you'll get rewarded? They may say yes. Traditionally, religious people will say yes. So it is about the work you do getting rewarded and the bad things you do getting punished. All right, so the basis, the foundational belief of your life is Good things reward, bad things punish. And yet there are many good people who do not feel, feel they are rewarded. There are many people who work hard, do not feel they are rewarded. They are watching other people who they feel do not work hard and are not nice people, getting everything that they, the good person, wants. Now they start to think the world is not fair. Underlying conflicting beliefs. There is a God who is good and all things are good and I will work hard and receive that reward, but not here. Be happy for what I have to consistently work to get to somewhere else. Gratitude is never about getting somewhere else. If you make gratitude your God, your life will be very different day to day, moment to moment. Because it is the key, it is the bridge back to your sanity when you are spinning out. If you can find gratitude when you are spinning out, you will come back to peace. That is guaranteed. But you will have to work for it. You are not going to get gratitude just by saying, I have a roof over my head, so I'm grateful. You never will find it that way. You have to get very tiny. Riz say earlier to everybody, sensitivity is your strength. Oh, so if you want to be tiny, you say, oh, explain what you mean tiny. All right, you're sitting in a room right now. Maybe you're sitting in a room right now that you have lived in for many years or many months, maybe your whole life. You know the room like the back of your hand. You're not so interested in it. 
Maybe you're more interested in what you are doing in the room rather than the physical room itself. But what if, magically, we made you very tiny, so now you're this big? Now you're in the room you're sitting in, but you're this big. Look around. Look at the chair, the table, look at the bed, look at the wall. Imagine if you were this big on the floor right now, looking up at the ceiling. Imagine how massive the room would be. Imagine now how it would smell to you. What would the temperature be like? What would the sound sound like? The little coffee table will seem like Mount Everest to you. The grain of wood in the table will look like a massive abstract painting towering in front of you. Imagine what the cat or the dog will look like. Imagine what the drop of water would sound like coming from the kitchen. Everything would change. Everything would be anew. Nothing changed. You changed. You are very focused on getting bigger than the room, breaking out, finding a new place. Fine. Do it. Nothing is stopping you. But you are going crazy till you get to the next level. You want to ascend, but you see, your spiritual ascension does not go this way. It goes this way. Ascension goes this way spiritually, not this way and out and away. Somewhere other than here. Like I was saying earlier, the resources are under your feet. Right now at this moment, you're watching this transmission. But something led you here. You say, somebody told me, oh, I like this guy, Rod, he has nice podcast. Who told you about him? I don't know, I was sitting here bored one day. I saw him. I say, I like him. All right. Who got you this computer? Oh, that's a long story. Did three years ago. All right. So because of the computer, you're able to see him. All right, let's go back to three years ago. Well, I had a new job. They gave me a bonus. Oh, how do you get that new job? It was through my friend here, John. How did you meet John? Oh, I met him 15 years ago. He's the one who told me about the job that could get me to buy the computer three years ago that I am sitting here right now and I discovered Rod's show. How did you meet John? Oh, you know, I had a flat tire 20 years ago. I met him at the service station. We became good friends. Who gave you the flat tire? Oh, I remember. I went to a party I did not want to go to. Very rambunctious party. There was broken glass. I left early. I asked myself, what am I doing at this party? Not my sin. I ran over the broken bottle of glass, got the flat tire, ended up there. Who invited you to the party? You see where we're going now? You can trace back this very moment to 30 years ago. What have we told you 30 years ago? Hey, if you go to this party tonight, in 30 years, you're going to end up watching a pretty cool podcast. They will say, what is a podcast? Everything we said is factually true in your life. Whatever your story is, you can trace to right this moment, you can trace it back to 30 years ago of happenstance. Or you can say that there is a part of you, a sense, that was hearing, seeing, smelling on a different level of frequency that is in the now, that is in real time. Your senses are in real time. They are not the physical senses are never in real time. Remember, all information has to go through the physical interface to get to the brain. That all takes time. What is this? What is the speed of smell? <laughs> You have this, this speed of light, the speed of sound. What about the other senses? There's a speed of touch. You touch here. You feel the jacket. It is a little rough denim. That information had to happen very quickly. Signals had to go very fast. Your spiritual upgrade is not that all your boxes are checked off in life about what you want. There are many people who have checked off all the boxes, same boxes as you. They don't even stick around. They take their own life. Not one, many. It is classic. You say, well, that will not happen to me. How do you know? You have not even gotten everything checked off the list, and suddenly you say, if you did get it checked off the list, you would not kill yourself. 
You want to talk real talk? We're talking real talk to you. Maybe you don't want to talk real talk. You just want to talk about meditation. You want to talk about astral projection. You want to talk about the world is going to end. You want to talk about the secrets that are working against you. You want to create, you want to listen to all this inflammatory spiritual talk. Better look out. Reality is energy that is projected from consciousness thought. One day planet Earth will not be here. Is that sad? Maybe you guys will make another planet. You made planets before this one. All of you, collective consciousness made the planet. It is God energy. All of it is one. Certainly do your best to take care of your home. Keep it neat. Try to keep it going. At the same time, understand it is not designed to be here forever. No planet is. No physical thing is designed to be here forever, physical as you perceive it. Your quantum physicists are telling you that there is more in the negative space that exists than in the positive objects space that you are perceiving with your eyes and your touch. So now quantum physicists have told you this. Shamans have told you this. Healers have told you this. So-called dead spirits have told you this. You say, I don't know still. When will you know? I don't know. Maybe when you stop judging people. Maybe when you just decide to commit yourself to service. What is your purpose in life? It is to celebrate and to serve. That is it. Everything will come from serving and celebrating. And serving and celebrating and celebrating and serving everything that you need to experience that you call evolution, teaching, self-help, all of it. It will be within celebration and service you will experience it. If you have a partnership, celebrate your partner and serve them. If you have children, celebrate them and serve them. If you have a job, celebrate that you get to do a job and serve there. If you walk in the park, celebrate nature. Maybe throw some birds, some breadcrumbs. Pick up some garbage, throw it away. Do not say, I didn't throw it there. But instead, the people are so worried about what they're going to get. Never so much. They're never worried about what they're going to give. That is interesting. They say, I want to be of service. So turn off the computer, go to the neighbor, say, what do you need? What are you talking about? Oh, no, not that kind of service. I don't like my neighbor. Now we know where you stand. You like it? You should love yourself enough to transform, and a part of you should get disgusted. Yeah, that is right. You need a little bit of disgust, a little bit of dark, a little bit of anger. It is not evil. You're not, you cannot be afraid to go there with yourself. It is not beating up on yourself. It is a little slap awake to get you back to be coherent. If you were to faint, your friend would come over, slap you five times across the face to get you to be coherent again. That is what we are talking about. It is not violent. It is not anger. It is to activate you. How are you serving? How are you celebrating? How are you celebrating? How are you serving today? Do them. Watch your life change. You will not be so concerned about these elections. Because you will still celebrate and serve no matter who is the president. Or won't you? Oh, they tried to stop me. Nobody is stopping you from going and helping your neighbor. No one. Well, my neighbor is, so go to the other neighbor. Keep going till someone will receive your help. 
you don't have time anymore. Not because the world is ending, but because you yourself have exhausted yourself of finding clarity, calm, consciousness, and connection through what others do or do not do to you or for you. Get rid of it. It does not matter anymore. You're more than that. You're not your body. You are not your intelligence. You are not your personality. You are the awareness, infinite and eternal, that can change everything for yourself. Bless you. Sorry, I just realized I was on mute. There was a garbage truck going past. I just asked if you were back. And you're back. I'm back. <laughs> that was awesome. That's the that's that's flying on the wings of Red Eagle. <laughs> I got this AI art program that I downloaded to my my phone, and you can you can um, create art, really cool art. And I made this um, montage of of uh, my first psychic experience when I was a kid, mm -hmm. and I was like telling the AI, draw an Indian kid with an Indian mom, and they're on the subway in New York City. And I was trying to tell the story of when I first had a connection from the other side. It's on my Instagram. Um, I invite you to take a look at it. I will. And it's really cool. And I've been thinking a lot about creativity and AI and, and things. Have you discussed that on your show? Um, only AI a little, I suppose, with another guest quite a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Not, I mean, I have an interest in it myself, but it's not something that's come out. I just kind of allow, try to allow things to happen organically with guests in it. Yeah, I can't say it's come out. How'd you feel when Red Eagle was coming through? I was, I was really, really locked in. Yeah, he, he's got a very, um, a lot of magnetism. I mean, you do too, but he's, was something, and you know what? I, he knew the question that I wanted to ask and he just answered it. Like, I didn't, I didn't have to ask yeah. it. He's like that. Yeah. So for the for 15 years, um, I've put on, my wife and I have put on the circle of light here in LA and in, and in other cities and different parts of the world, but mostly in LA. And um, it was twice a week, sometimes three times a week, a gathering where I would sit in a chair and people would sit on the floor on yoga mats and I would channel for a few hours and everyone would get a personal message. Mm -hmm. And now I do them the just the nature of you know your work you start getting busier and busier and and things and so my work of my focus now i do private channeling circles so people will rent a space and they'll come and they'll come with their group sometimes it's mm. you know a corporate event or sometimes it is um a particular school or workshop or something and i come and i channel and the messages that people get, they're personal messages. So Red Eagle goes around to each person and gives them a message. Sometimes they ask, can you give me a message from my grandmother? And he gives those messages. But I want to talk about, if you're interested in about what is the purpose of the guides? Yeah, that, that was kind of, that was actually my question. That was the, the question I thought I wanted to ask, but actually he answered a different one, which was more profound for me. So, but that was actually the original question was, what's, he, what's his purpose? Like, why does he come through like this? I, I want to, I want to share that answer mm. with you. Got to get comfortable here. Cause he, he, when he comes in the body, it's like, whoo, it's like someone trying on a jacket that's too small. He just wants to burst like the Hulk through me. Um, so spirit guides are not here to give you what you want. That's not what a teacher does. They are teachers without grading you. So if a teacher never graded you or gave you a diploma, if graduation wasn't a thing, what would a teacher be? What's their purpose? Well, they're, they're here to teach you. They're teach you, here to teach you how to navigate. They teach navigation. What is navigation? Navigation of what? Reality. What you're experiencing. So they don't give you what you want. You can leave that to religion. People pray to the angels and the saints. Please. St. Teresa, give me what I want. Make this happen. There's an old saying, which I think is so powerful. People turn to God when their foundations are shaking, only to discover that it is God who is shaking their foundations. 
People go, please, God, don't let this happen. You mean the thing that God is making happen? No, it's not God making it happen. It's not? But you said God's responsible for all things. So either there is no God, or maybe your definition of God is can be expanded into something even better, something more empowering, something more enlightening, something actually more fulfilling and mind-blowing. So if you're going to ask your spirit guides to do stuff for you, I'd say just stick to religion because no one will make fun of you really there. They'll make fun of you more for believing in spirit. <laughs> so that's changing. Thanks, Gen Z. You guys listen. Um, your spirit guides are here to help you connect the dots that are appearing before you. How to connect the dots to give you a clearer picture. You say, well, explain that more in detail. Okay. You broke your ankle. You can't go to work now. That really sucks. Okay. Um, did you love your job? No, but I like my job. Okay. Um, have you been thinking about leaving? Well, I was thinking about leaving maybe after a year. Are you saying that I broke my ankle because I was subconsciously trying to get out of my job? Yes, I am. I am saying that. Well, that's harsh. And I go, no, that's not harsh. That's just how stubborn you are. Guilty of the same thing. I've had it happen to me too. I'm not judging you. I'm just talking about the nature of being a human who's in survival mode. So the universe believes that you belong somewhere else. Well, they fired me because, I, oh, I just found out I got fired because my, I didn't go into work. Well, the universe believes that you belong somewhere else. So does the other job, by the way. The job fired you because they believe you belong somewhere else. <laughs> More than you do. <laughs> so we're all trying to get you, the universe and the job, we're all trying to convince you that you belong somewhere else. You just said you didn't want to die at that job. Yeah, but I wanted to stay there another year. Why? Maybe something is ready for you now. It's showing up because you're ready. That's why it's showing up, because you're ready. And you have to step. There's the ankle connection. Stepping forward. You know, there's a great book. You can read Louise Hay. Mm -hmm. You can heal your life. She channeled all of what the body means. By the way, Louise Hay was a student of my great mentor and teacher, Mr. Alexander Murray, who passed about two years ago, one of the greatest psychic mediums and trans channels ever. You can look him up, Alex Murray oh. in New York City. There's a page on him. There's actually an interview I did with him on my YouTube. Um, Louise used to go to him back in the 70s, 80s. Um, but Louise, don't know why you didn't thank Alex for helping with those teachings, but now I get to tell everyone. I'm sure they worked it out up there. So each part of the body is connected to a different part of you. For example, your teeth are connected to your lineage. So root, root canal, your roots, even though there's a physical root as well. For example, your body burns up in a fire. Your dental records are the only way they can really identify you. It's connected to teeth. Stuff is always about family, lineage, changing, uprooting, letting go of, pulsion. So when you read some books that will teach you, you can Google it too. What are the connections? You have something happen to your elbow. Okay, what does the elbow mean? Okay, what about if I can't turn my neck? What does appendicitis mean? There are physical causes, and then there are also spiritual messages that that body part is trying to tell you. So we're not saying that you're causing the disease. What we're saying is that it's a number of factors. What can give you a heart attack? Can fear give you a heart attack? Yes or no? Sure, it could. Enough of course stress. it does. People say it all the time. Oh my God, this happened. I almost had a heart attack. Right, of course. People have died, literally have died from fear. They have heart attacks. They faint. Their heart stops because of fear, shock. Okay, those are extreme cases. What about a milder case? Let's say you didn't get a heart attack, but you were shocked by something. And instead of Heart attack being at, at the level 10, what's, the, what's that level two? 
Oh, I don't know. Can't sleep. Yeah. What's that level three? I don't know. Inflammation. Okay. What's the level four? Keep going. And then eventually we'll get to heart attack. So one of the biggest messages that I have found from the spirit guides is that they're trying to teach us how to learn from joy rather than pain. Can you learn from joyful experiences rather than painful ones? We are usually taught to learn from painful ones, physical experiences when we're a kid. Don't put your finger in the fire. Don't touch the electrical outlet and then you'll find out. Okay, great. You found out not to ever touch the fire and ever touch the electrical socket. Is there a way to learn from joy? Can you learn from two chipmunks playing in the grass? If you are sensitive, you can. If you're sensitive and know how to use your sensitivity, you can make, great, make an amazing meal with what's in your kitchen right now. How do I know? You don't even have to go shopping. If Gordon Ramsay were to come to your house right now, he could make something great in your kitchen right now. So people, you have the ingredients. You have the ingredients right now. You just don't know how to use them. So learn how to use them. That's what the spirit guides teach us. They teach you how to be Gordon Ramsay with the kitchen you've got right now. And I, yo, I'm going to applaud myself for that one because that shit was really good. And I, that one was, you know, there's certain things I repeat in every podcast because you have to, right? Because that's what you teach, your principles. But that one was the first time on Untethered Consciousness. You heard it here. You heard it here. First, folks, that's what the spirit guides teach you. I love it when that happens. If if I get if if a guest says I've never ever said this before on a podcast, I'm like, yes, <laughs> that's yeah, that's the one tick box they'll do. Thank you. Hey, Rod, I have a question for you. Have you ever sure. played an instrument? Have you ever picked up the bass? Um, I have played the guitar a little, but yeah. not not to any great extent. I, I had uh, when I was in university, university dropout. My friend taught me how to play um eagle rock and i played it by ear and that was it well i'll tell you something you have this you played it by ear right mm -hmm. that's remarkable guys who are watching you, you heard what he said if you guys are playing music he just said he picked it up and played it by ear oh my friend taught me how to play it yeah sorry it's it sounds more awesome than it actually was i think but no but you never no. knew how to play the instrument no So there's something musical in you. Now, I said bass for a reason, because this whole time when I've been kind of just wanted to give you a little psychic thing. Um, so there was a musician named Count Basie. He wasn't, a, he wasn't named that after the bass instrument, but I feel he's one of your spirit guides. Right. You know, I love asking when I, ha I haven't had many ch uh, psychics on, but I always, I'm reluctant to ask about anything to do with me, but I like it when something does come through. Well, guys, so, I'm going to tell you. So, Rod, Rod I'm taking, taking this part over because you're too right. humble and, and nice and you want everybody to get information. But I want to give Rod a couple of messages. Number one, since these are first that we're doing on, <laughs> since we're going to Oz, I'll be the wizard, Riz the Wiz of Oz today, just for a few yep. minutes, if I may. Um, Count Basie is one of your guides, okay? And the whole time I've been sitting here channeling everything, I just kept hearing that, doom, 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 like that kind of music, you know? that mm -hmm. jazzy kind of swing kind of music. And the message I want to get give to you is he was all about syncopation, synchronization, and orchestration. Let's call it SOS. Synchronization, orchestration, and syncopation. When things are syncopated, it's like a syncopated rhythm. It's like there's a certain... How would I say a certain attack? Very precise. You're all about that. Mm -hmm. You don't, you're like a crocodile. You don't move unless you, you're ready and you have to. You will sit in the swamp all day long and the moment comes and, and then it's done. You don't waste energy. And he's like that. He doesn't waste a note. And he's here to teach you that. Making sense about you? Because you, mm -hmm. I don't know you personally, yep. but this is what's coming yep. through. I hope this you're is bang on. coming through. The other thing is, you had a past life where you, hel you, ha you held very heavy tools. 
I feel either you have a repulsion to those kinds of things or you're into it and want to get into it, but it's not in the middle. Can we yes. expound on that? So the, the, well, that might explain the fascination with lifting heavy things like lifting weights ever since I was very, very, very young. You ever have those hand grips? Yeah. Those hand yeah. grips work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they keep showing me your hands like this. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, that wanting to do that. Mm -hmm. So you had this, you needed to have this big machinery in your hands in this past life. I don't know where it is. I'm not going to look at them too much, but I keep seeing your hands. I also, by the way, I don't know if this name Jenny or Jeannie means anything to you, but that's come this. I'll, I'll let you continue. Am I putting you on the spot? No, no, um, no. It's so good. Love it. Love it. Okay. It makes sense to you? Yep. She was in that past life with you. We don't have to say it because I'm sure it's personal, but she was in that past life with you. And she's here because um, she believes in you and um, she recognizes who you are because you were, you were I almost want to say you were like moving mountains. And that, um, I also see that this was Greece, like sort of like a Greek, Greek, Greek environment, but it almost feels mythical to me. People go, well, we didn't have Zeus and Apollo in real life. I go, yes, we did. It's just in a different dimension than you're seeing right now. Mm. Of course they existed. So people ask me all the time, are dragons real? I go, yes, but not in this dimension, in the one right next to us. That's why we can never let go of the archetypes of Merlin the archetypes of dragons, it can be, you can make more and more movies about it. And no one will ever get tired of it. It's innate in us to believe in that and to feel the gravitas of a dragon because they exist in this dimension right next to us. So Count Basie wants you to kind of look, maybe Wikipedia him. I don't know much about him. Okay. Read about some of the things he said and read some quotes from him. And it's mm -hmm. going to be inspiring for you. Last but not least, um, do you have any dinosaur artifacts in your house? Uh, you know, like artifacts? fossils? I, I don't think so. Get one. Um, it's okay. like your lucky charm. Um, right. It could be, you know, believe it or not, they're actually kind of cheap. They're not, you would think they're very expensive. They're not. Anything okay. that's like a fossil, um, it is about something that carries, you're here bringing information that's going to, the show is going to get, four times as big this year. Um, so you need, just as a power totem in your house, get something that is an original kind of dinosaur fossil thing. It could even be a fossilized fish. Man, I feel like you have this or someone you know has this. It doesn't feel far off. Do you know if somebody has this that you know hanging in their house? Um, maybe my mother, maybe my in-laws, they've got a lot of that kind of thing that, I don't okay. remember specifically a fossil, but maybe. Okay. I'll find yeah, out. I mean, I, I was actually, you know I had this, like. I recently had an obsession with getting something and I just, I only just bought this crystal. This is the very first crystal I ever bought, but I don't know why I bought it, but I want, I had to, I had to get something like some little <laughs> thing. So well, you know, this. think about how long it took to form that crystal. Yeah. You, you can't even imagine how long it took to form that crystal. So that ancientness hmm. kind of is, it's. You know, people throw around the term old soul, but you are one. And I want you to have some certain things that are very cosmic, like mind blowing things like, wow, these things roam the earth. I have a piece of it here in my house. Mm. Um, cool. Very, very good. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have kids? I've got four. Wow. Who's the second one? The second one is Belle, my uh, five year old, nearly six year old daughter. Um, curious. Does she talk to herself? Uh, yeah, she talks a lot. Yeah. And, and she tears, has, yeah. um, she has a little empathic gift. She knows things. And yeah, not surprised. she's your psychic kid. She should spend time with the horses. My, um, uh, my brother-in-law has horses. Great. Has she been to his place yet? Yeah. Yeah. Is she scared of them or does she, will she go touch them? No, yeah. She's not scared of them. Yeah. She okay, great. Them. Mm. So she needs to touch, she needs to have her hand on their mane and ask her little things like when you're there, say, so Belle, what is, uh, what is the horse saying? What do you think the okay. horse is saying? Don't pressure her. Just be like, what do you think the horse is saying or thinking right now? 
and just leave it at that, whatever she says, accept it. And then each time she's around a horse, just ask her that again. I feel she has some animal communication skills in her. And who's the kid with the sinus problem? Uh, that would be Jacob. He's my second oldest. Yeah. He should be taking something called NAC. Look, uh, look into it. Oh, uh, acetylcysteine. N-acetylcysteine. Yep. Yes, but he mm -hmm. should get it in the effervescent tablet form, okay. not in the capsule. Look okay. up on the internet where you can get that. I see him drinking yeah. this fizzy drink, and it has to do with that. Oh, I just happen to do, I, I work for a supplement company. Um, okay, you I'm do? To, I do. That's great. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think it's called Pharma NAC. I think it's okay. from Switzerland. If that serves me correctly. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, do you have a message for my wife? Yes. What's her name? April. April. Yeah. Does she ever get any headaches? She does. Yeah. Um, I see that, and I'm just looking into this. The first thing that popped up at me. She has to be able to just, and it may take some time for her to have a nap in the house with no one around. Now you got four mm -hmm. kids. I don't know how that's ever going to happen. Yeah, uh, we we have a, a interesting living situation, so she can, she can do that. Not every day. She but, needs yeah. to. She may not be able to physically when she actually makes the time because she might go. I can't do this. She might sleep mm -hmm. fifteen minutes and go. I, why, what do I do? Need to do next. Um, a couple of things will help her. One is there's this a name Mary which is around her. Do you know this name? Do you know who this is referring to? The name is okay. Mary or Mariam or Miriam. It's like okay. that name. It's in, I feel this name is in spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's just, I always like to say where I'm getting this from. Okay. That's what's coming to me. I know you guys are in Australia, but has she ever had the, has she, have you guys been to the Pacific Northwest yet? Here in the um, States? There's a place called the Redwoods together. here. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a place called the Redwoods. Yep. Even if she can't get to it, you, she should put on the TV, like one of those ambient rooms where the people are walking through the video mm -hmm. of the Redwoods. I feel it's almost like she needs to ground, take her shoes off, walk on the earth, and feel the energy in the, of the Redwood trees. I know you don't really have those trees in, in Oz. Mm -hmm. But she's from here originally. I feel she was tribal and from the States. Right. Past life. The other thing I want to say is uh, career change, career change, career change. Mm -hmm. um, that is, it's happening. Go full force on it. I don't mean force yourself on it. I just mean like let the floodgates open. Let the floodgates open. Where's her dad? Uh, yeah, he's still around. Wait, is yeah, like, but where does, like, he where is he? Oh, he, uh, he's on the South coast. So he's about two hours South of Sydney. Okay. So she can, she can talk to him about this. Okay. I want to, there's something about, has she ever spoken about this, the career thing to her dad? Um, I'm not sure. She hasn't shared that with me if she has. I feel like, um, she's kind of here to express what her dad didn't express in life. I'm okay. Say that. Say that. That actually does make a lot of sense. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And when she knows that, and when she tells him that, what that's going to do is give her the kind of the spiritual rocket fuel to launch her forward. Also, is it that you in your living space? Like, you're in, are you in your own home? You broadcast. Yes, your I home? am. Yeah, yeah. This okay. is actually my my uh, office slash bedroom. Okay, great. I know this is a weird question. It, it, do you or somebody near this house fix motors? Uh, fix motors? Or have a motor out on the outside or something? I hear a motor, and I'm not talking about with my physical ear over this microphone, mm -hmm. but it's like someone works in that field, or this is going around in that, in that immediate 
area. If you don't know, or there I isn't. Have fr- I have a friend who does, but it's not in this immediate area. Okay, wh- but he, what does he do? Yeah, he's a mechanic. So he, Has he, he come over to this house? He has been, yeah, it was a while ago, but yeah. Okay. Did he lose a parent? Um, yes. Yes, when he was very young. Yeah. I know this is, you go, well, how is this happening here now? This is the way it works. He's yep. not going to a medium, but I'm mentally, psychically hearing someone who has something to do with motors because there's somebody here who is a parent trying to get this message to. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. He's the only one of my friends who has had that, uh, as far as I'm aware, who's... Yes. Yeah. His parent is fine and with him and considers him very, very smart. Yeah, he is. The eldest child's name is what? Uh, Ethan. Oh, a charmer. First thing I have to say, his charm is going to get him everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I see that he he's dealing with, um, you know, look, he's he's a thinker and a feeler, and he's going to be trying to understand um, his place and really understanding his own power. I want to say every human being has to know how to understand their own anger and things that disturb them. And he's going through that. And uh, it's just, it is just teaching him how to drop into his heart and having good outlets for that. And um, he's a leader and he will step into that as he gets older. Yeah. Yeah. I know this is the one last thing and I'm giving you a reading in front of everybody on your show watching this. That's cool. Um, is this name... And I don't, if this is a nickname, I'm, I'm, I know it sounds funny, but is the name like BB or is this, a, is this a nickname for someone or initials for someone? Oh, well, my, my daughter, we call her Bell Bell. Bell Bell. Okay, thank we you. always right, say Bell Bell. That's, we don't use Bell, we use Bell Bell. Okay, because I hear that around it where you are, so I didn't know what that was. Okay, mm-hmm. Bell Bell. Okay, got it. And you said her name earlier, Bell. Got yeah. it. Okay, but I kept hearing... BB, BB, like so you call her Bell Bell. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There is um one more message I want to give. Give me give me a moment. And does his name Carrie or Carol mean anything to you guys? You or your wife? Uh You have to ask her. You want to ask her? I'm going to text her. Keep, keep digging. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, this name is coming up. I don't know. Okay. It could be for the future, but it has to do with the new career, the new right. shift. Carrie or Carol. Okay. Carol is more of an older name. Carrie is more of a current name, but that's probably what they, they call her. And last but not least, one more, guys, for the road. It's fun to watch psychic readings sometimes. Um, all the time for me is your um your reach that's starting to go out into the world it is think of it as when you play your music they will come because the sound will carry the vibration there's certain things like putting yourself out there that you have to do natural things that you have to do anytime that you're trying to expand your work in the public eye But other than that, it's more about all you have to do is take your bouquet of roses and wave it in the air and the wind is going to carry the fragrance. You don't have to take your bouquet of roses and stick it in someone's face and go smell this. And you're doing that. And the winds are picking up, brother. Yeah. Yeah. People, people, I spent a long time like reaching and it's it's starting to. Do you ever get any pain in your side and your rib area? Uh, if or, I lay on my right hand side, it's, it's like, it's, like but like killer, right? Oh, You're not, like, not killer. That? No. Yeah. I wouldn't say it was killer. Well, why does it feel like it's super tight right in here where I'm, see where I'm going? Yeah. It's just, I do, I, if I, I can't really lay on that side when I'm sleeping because of that discomfort. I have to. Okay. That's right. Okay. So it's okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Why is that? Why am I feeling that in you? Is there, was there an injury or something? Yeah. I don't think it was. 
what is that, that? Why is that happening? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. Isn't it weird? Yeah, yeah. It's weird enough where I feel it from across the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, and yet sitting here, it's fine. It's only when I actually when I lay down to sleep where I notice. I know. Like, oh God, I've got to roll it the other way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, you know, do the physical things that are necessary for that. But I feel like it's almost like the ligaments are somehow tight in here. And okay. I feel that it's connected to all the way in the back on the right side. And you should get your massage therapist to just dig their elbow in there. Yeah. Something very tight in there. You'll maybe fix it's just it. that I should see a massage therapist because I never ever see one. And it's, people have been telling me to do that. And maybe a very talented Cairo guy. Mm -hmm. Cairo. That's it for my little reading, guys, that you got That's to see Rod get. That's awesome. I'm so glad this is right. recorded. Um, Riz, it's been yeah. an absolute pleasure. How about you just tell us, you know, how people can find out more about your work? Sure. You can reach me. Uh, best uh, two things you can do is follow me on Instagram. It's psychic Riz the Wiz with underscores between all those words, psychic Riz the Wiz. And my website is rizmirza.com, R-I-Z-M-I-R-Z-A.com. And that you can learn all about my retreats. We lead retreats to Egypt, pyramid retreats, going into the secret spaces and the vortexes of Egypt. It's a week long, beautiful retreat. It's happening in December. I have a retreat to Japan, to um, Salem, Massachusetts, Sedona, Arizona, Mount Shasta. All of these wonderful retreats are on my website. I do personal psychic readings by phone and shamanic work, which is held here in the Southern California area. And I also have a YouTube channel with my wife called Meta Mystic, where I do live psychic readings. I also do channeling and talking about all things mystical, magical, and mysterious. Awesome. Have you got any final message for the viewers? I do. My final message is this, guys. Don't give up on your joy and your peace because you don't like what's going on in the world. There are certain people also that are meant to be no longer in your life. Allow them to go and know it's because there's a different experience in terms of friends that you need to be around. And the more that we let go of judge, judgment, blame, victimhood, the freer you will become. So take back your power. Your ultimate power is your peace. That's the only real power there is, is peace. And you need that for yourself now. So dedicate yourself to that. If I may suggest that to you, please receive it. Thank you. Riz, thank you so much for coming on my show today. Blessings. So good to talk to you. Can't wait to do it again.